Hey guys, it's Raging Raid Raptor here again, coming at you today with my Fluffle deck profile. Now I do want to immediately preference this by saying that although I am happy with the card choices I have made, I'm still not entirely sure about the ratios just yet. So if you have any suggestions about how many cards I should take out and what I should put back in, please let me know in the comment section below. But without further ado, let's get started. Starting off, we have three copies of Fluffle Dog. This card helps tremendously with consistency as it can search any Fluffle Monster as well as any copy of Edge Imp Sabres, which is incredibly important for the rest of your deck to function and definitely a staple at free. Next up, I am running three copies of Fluffle Bear. Back when this card was originally released, it wasn't actually that good. But now that we have cards like Fluffle Wings, this card is actually incredibly good since you mainly use this to get to your toy vendors as quickly as possible, which is very important for consistency and draw power. Next up, one of the brand new cards from the Fusion Enforcer set. I'm running two copies of Fluffle Penguin. You are mainly going to use this card for the additional draw power that it provides when you use it as fusion material, which definitely helps this deck make more aggressive plays a lot faster. Next up, I'm running three copies of Fluffle Wings. I'm mainly running three for the extra consistency of seeing it sooner. However, I have found that at times it's been unnecessary, since there are instances where I usually send my toy vendor to the graveyard faster than I can actually send Fluffle Wings to the graveyard. But currently, right now, three is working out just fine for me. Next up, I'm running one copy of Fluffle Owl. This is mainly for the additional fusion summon that it provides with the built-in effect of paying 500 life points. But it is also very good at helping you search another copy of polymerization from your deck, which is extremely important within this archetype. Next up, I'm running one copy of Fluffle Cat. I'm mainly running this just so I can recycle my copy of polymerization, just so I can get more fusion summons off. And also the fact that you can chain it with an effect like Fright for Tiger, in order to chain it to cards like Solemn Strike. Next up, I am running one copy of Fluffle Sheep. This is a card that I have questions about whether or not I should put it up to two or not, as I have found that being able to bring back one of my Edgit monsters from the graveyard and being able to put Fluffle Dog back into my hand has been incredibly helpful in the past. However, the reason I'm running this card at one at the moment is because of the fact that Zodiac Beast can significantly outpace this deck by a huge margin, and at times I've found this card to be a bit unnecessary during the early game. So this is one I'm not entirely sure about running at the moment. Next up, I am running three copies of Edge of Chain. This card is actually fantastic in the deck, since it can help you search out any of your Frightful cards, like Frightful Fusion, when it is sent to the graveyard from either your hands or the field, which is incredibly important for consistency reasons. Next up, I am running two copies of Edge Imp Sabres. The main reason I'm running this at two is because of the fact it is searchable with the effective Toy Vendor and Fluffle Dog, and because of the fact I'm playing King of the Swamps in this deck, considering that it is important for summoning some of your most powerful Frightful monsters. And for the last set of monsters, I am running three copies of King of the Swamp. When Fright for Patchwork comes out, I will be immediately taking this card out of the deck, since Fright for Patchwork is searchable with the effect of Edge Imp Chain and can actually fulfill this card's purpose a lot more efficiently. However, as of right now, King of the Swamps is probably the best card for searching polymerization within the Fluffle archetype, so I definitely recommend you run it at free. Next up, I am running three copies of Twin Twister. The reason I'm running this at three is because I want to see it as soon as possible to get rid of cards like Solemn Strike or Torrential Tribute. However, if you hit a dimensional barrier on your turn and have not summoned any other fusion monsters, they might call Exes just to be on the safe side since Zodiacs are very prevalent at the moment. Next up, I'm playing one of the brand new cards from Raging Tempest, and that is Foolish Burial Goods. Granted, I've never actually been able to resolve all three copies within a duel before, and three might be a bit unnecessary, 
However, the reason I'm running it at free is just because I want the extra consistency of being able to send Toy Vendor from your deck to the graveyard in order to get an additional search from it. However, you can cut this down to two if you really want to. Next up, I am running one copy of Raigeki. Now that destruction effects have become prevalent again, I feel this card is very necessary if you want to clear your opponent's board of Zodiac cards. However, you can still use it against the Evoke deck in order to bait out the effect of Mechler, which is why I'm running this card. And to go along with that, I'm running two copies of Dark Hole for the exact same reason. Next up, I am running three copies of Polymerization. As I've mentioned before, this is searchable with the effect of King of the Swamps and Fluffalow, and is very important for the combo plays that this deck can utilize. Next up, I am running two copies of Instant Fusion. I was originally playtesting this at free just for the extra consistency of being able to search Elder Entity Norden and Fluffle Sheep. However, I did find that a bit cloggy and unnecessary. And two, it's working out just fine for me. Next up, I am running three copies of Toy Vendor. You are going to preferably use this to send Fluffle Owl from your hand to the graveyard and then draw two additional cards and a search in combination with those two effects and can also help you with draw power and special summoning with its first effect. So playing it at three is definitely necessary in my opinion. Next up, I am running three copies of Fright for Fusion. Now I have been considering putting this down to two since it is searchable with the effect of Edgent Chain. And the fact that it has for once per term Flawza definitely makes this card not as abusable as something like Miracle Fusion. However, I'm currently running this at free just because I want to potentially see this as soon as possible. However, that will change once Frightful Patchwork comes out. And, current and finally, I'm running one copy of Frightful Factory. I'm currently running this at one since it isn't always necessary to use. However, I have found that in certain situations it has been very good at providing me with an additional fusion summon. And the fact that it's searchable with the effect of Edgem Chain doesn't hurt either. Now to the extra deck, I am running the one copy of Elder Entity Norden. This is mainly for the rank 4 plays that this deck can utilise, as well as a certain tech card that I'm sure all of you know about by now. Next up, I am running two copies of Fright for Sheep. I do mainly use this card to make the summoning of Fright for Sabertooth a lot easier. However, it's still not entirely terrible against Zodiac, since its Harmadi's effect can stop your opponent from using the additional effect that Zodiac Whiptail offers to the other Zodiac Xyz monsters. And also the fact that it can special summon itself back from the graveyard when it's destroyed is definitely a nice bonus. Next up, I am running one copy of Fright for Wolf. I feel like you only really need to run one, since you can summon it with Fright for Fusion with four materials extremely easy, giving you enough attack power to OTK your opponent. Next up, I am running two copies of Fright for Tiger. Now you can run three if you want to, since its destruction effect is incredibly powerful. However, the reason I'm only running two is because of the fact that the extra deck that I'm running is extremely tight. But still an incredibly good card nonetheless. Next up, I am running two copies of Fright for Sabertooth. The reason I'm running two is for the same reason I'm only running two copies of Fright for Tiger. However, its non-destruction effect is still very good against Zodiac Dryden's also, the fact that it can special summon any Frightful monster from your graveyard when it's fusion summoned can be very important with your combo plays. And to combo off with it, I am running two copies of Frightful Kraken. This card is fantastic since it can get rid of any monster on your opponent's side of the field without actually destroying it. And also the fact that it can potentially attack twice is very incredibly powerful. And since it doesn't have a text that says you can only use that named monster once per turn, makes it incredibly abusable with the effect of Fright for Sabertooth. Moving over to the Xyz monsters, I am running one German copy of Totally Awesome. Having an extra negation is definitely very good, as well as being able to put itself back into your extra deck, or a copy of Fluffle Penguin back into your hand is definitely very excellent. Next up, we have one copy of Bahamut Shark. 
you're mainly going to use this to special summon totally awesome from your extra deck. Next up, I have one copy of Abyss Dweller. Now, I was originally thinking of putting Castell as my other rank 4. However, I've decided to go with Abyss Dweller just because of the lawn mowing decks like Skull Servant and the Light Swarm deck, as well as the Invoked Archetype that utilise effects in their graveyard. Now, next up for my rank 8, I have one copy of Hope Heartbringer Titanic Galaxy. I mainly have this in case I'm put in situations where I have to go first. Ah, since Flupples mainly benefit from going second, I decided to go with Hope Harbringer just because of the fact that it can stop spell cards like Lawn Mowing Next Door and Invoked Fusion. However, this card still can be very easily defeated by Zodiac since they mainly use monster effects to get rid of their opponent's cards. Which leads me into this. One copy of Divine Knight Dragon Felgram. Since Zodiacs mainly use effect monsters in order to get rid of your opponent's cards, I decided to put this as an additional rank 8 for extra protection. Since its effect is a spell speed 2 and does not require any conditions to be met. However, if this card survives and your opponent has another monster on the field like Dryden, you can use this card's effect to negate it for that turn allowing you to go off with your combos a lot more easier without having to worry about any of your monsters being destroyed. Well, that is the end of my Fluffle deck profile. If you have any suggestions about the ratios I should run, let me know in the comments section below. I've been Raging Raid Raptor, and I'll see you all again in the next video.